the most popular topic. Uh, I think uh, I'll just go back to a uh, real estate uh, question again. Uh, simply because we have seen, because Propnex, we, our partnership with JLL and as well the international offices and so on, we do sell a huge number of overseas properties as well. We do sell properties from Japan, Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, UK, Australia, Vietnam. Yeah. So, and we also notice Singaporeans are uh, more number of salespeople, uh, consumers and Singaporeans by and large are prepared to invest in Manila for that matter because it's only hundred to two hundred thousand dollars or in Bangkok or Cambodia, even developing countries. And one of the push factor here is our ABSD for the second and third properties. And we are actually very, very concerned because in some of these investments, even though we do some due diligence, there's no guarantee that country's economy, the security, the stability of the government, and so much so some of the Singaporeans' future retirement funds may be at risk. And mainly the push factor is because of hefty ABSD for Singaporeans to own a second property within our own island, Singapore. Is this something seriously worth considering, calibrating for the Singaporeans' interest of the current cooling measures? Well, okay. first, I think your, your point about, you know, be careful about investing in overseas property that you have to take into account you know, a whole range of issues like, you know, security, the government's position, whether policies may change, and uh, the currency fluctuations that take place and so on. All those are very relevant considerations, and I I would certainly uh, say that indeed all property buyers will need to be careful. In fact, in all investments, uh, when you, whether it is property, stocks or bonds in a foreign currency unit, you will have to take into account all those factors. But property happens to be a big item and therefore you have to consider it even more carefully. Now, would it be a good idea for us to encourage Singaporeans to buy, therefore, don't buy overseas property, buy properties only at home because there's no less of a currency problem and so on. Again, the answer goes back to what is a sustainable demand? I know many uh, people buy property and say, well, I can rent it out. But how many property you can rent out depends ultimately on the population in Singapore. Depends on how many people want to rent. Most Singaporeans own their own property, you can buy an HDB or you can buy uh, a condo and uh, at the end of it, the people who are likely to rent property are people who come in for you know, short leases, they are coming here to work and so on. So there is uh, a natural limit to how far you can grow. Now, in terms of overseas buyers, there are plenty of overseas buyers. I look at the property prices in the the key cities, even just within Asia. And I meet many of these business people overseas. And the common thing that they tell me is, oh, Mr. Hing, Singapore property, cheap, cheap, cheap. Okay. So we can uh, buy more, just compared to uh, all the key cities, we are really uh, still quite affordable. And therefore, the cooling measures are necessary because if we open up our market completely, I think we are will be in for a huge surge, and in the end, our property prices will be driven not by our own fundamentals, but by fundamentals in, the, in by changes in the region. And if there's a speculative wave in our region, you'll find that we will be subject to that speculative wave. So it's not in Singaporeans' interest in the long run to have that. You, know, you can make quick, short-term buck. Some people will make become rich by doing that. But ultimately, many people are going to suffer. So it's not something that we. Use. So the other thing is for Singaporeans investment. So where do I invest? You know, I I, I don't want to just put money in the bank. And that's why I think having a diversified portfolio is important. Uh, whether you are going to buy, you know, a portfolio of bonds, equities, uh, combining some real estate. I think it's, it's up to Singaporeans to decide on that. And you could do that uh, quite wisely by having a diversified portfolio. Okay, sir. I will move away from all real estate questions.
questions as far as um, uh, cooling measures and ABSDs and so on. But having said that, what I will just uh, say here is this. Uh, the recent paper that we put up and we sent to MNP and as well as to your office is simply uh, something that we, I don't need an answer today, uh, neither is. Uh, it only comes from our ground feedback that uh, some calibration for Singaporean facilitation of upgrading. In fact, we are not even asking uh, at this juncture because of the recent reissue cases of OTP. And, and this whole reissue by Credit Suisse, when they highlighted this thing, was uh, because of the increase of the stamp duty from 7% to 12%. What happened here is this, many of the HDB upgraders who want to buy a private property in the absence of EC, there are less than number of ECs in the market. And this is the true aspirations of Singaporean wanting to buy. But unfortunately, they are caught with a 12% to pay first, but they can get a refund. Uh, but you know, generally, uh, and we notice that in some of the new launches, uh, the take-up rate is less than 10%, and we are talking about development with 1,400 units, less than 5%. And these, are, these developments are really the hinterland of public housing. Uh, uh, so, one of the major considerations here is uh, situations like this, if we can further calibrate just to facilitate, it will be a great help for Singaporeans at large to upgrade towards their aspirations. Yeah. I mean, this is just a comment. Uh, if you want to say something, it's okay. If not, we will just. Uh, Hear from you in some time. I'll, I'll, I'll leave uh, MND to consider that. Okay, fine. Good, sir. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.